welcome back to my channel. Have I got a special interview for you guys today. We're going to be learning all about flowability and functional movement. I'm going to be interviewing a very special guest who has over 12 years experience as a personal trainer in the fitness industry and who is a student of flowability himself. He is also my trainer. He has taught me everything that I know about the system and I can't wait for you guys to also get to learn from him because it's just super interesting. Really, really interesting. I love this stuff. So let's dive into it guys. I bring to you Adrian Gaskin. Hello, Adrian. I'm so excited to have you here for the Feel Good Spine podcast. Brum, brum, brum. Yes. <laughs> Myself and my listeners, we cannot wait to learn about all the exciting things you're going to share with us today about flowability, about functional movement, about how we can help and improve our scoliosis. So this is just really, really exciting. I'm going to get started by letting you say hi and give us a little information about yourself. Hello, Claudia, and hello to everyone listening. Uh, my name is Adrian. I'm a personal trainer. I'm from New Zealand. I've been in the industry for 12 plus years. I, I love what I do. I'm fascinated by the human body. I'm a student of the game, so to say. The more you learn, the more you know you don't know. That's kind of the thing with me. And I plan on being a student for the rest of my life with this stuff. Um, yeah, I, I practice flowability. I'm a student of this. And yeah, that's a little introduction to me and who I am. And I hope to share some useful stuff today. Nice. Well, that was wonderful. And we're very excited to have you here. So I guess we'll come straight on to some questions. My first question was actually one of my one of my listen, listeners asked this as well combat axel so i'm just going to get this one answered straight away for you and myself we are on the same page let's explain functional movement why should we take an interest in improving our ability to move and how might this affect someone with scoliosis explain functional movement so that for me i think it means a lot of different things to different people for me, functional movement would be honoring gait. So thinking about how we walk or run. So this being a foundational or fundamental movement patterns for the human being. So with all of my training, I like to think, is this helping me walk or run? Is this improving how I walk or run? So every time I go to train, I stand up, go for a walk. Do I feel better? Do I feel worse? Has anything changed? Now, that in itself is a real, we can get into a real deep dive on that. So I don't want to get stuck in the, stuck in the mud with that one. But another way to think about functional training is, is it helping you do the things you love to do with your body, right? So we could think of really anything we do physically. And that really is everything from knitting to playing golf to snowboarding to whatever it is, if you like gaming, there's still a physicality to that. So is your training helping you do the things you love to do physically? That's how I like to think of functional movement. So we've got one aspect, which is gait. Are we improving how we walk and run? Now that's a big deep dive. I don't think we need to necessarily get into that. Uh, and then the other part of it is just, is it helping you do the things you love to do pain-free and well, and for as long as possible? Um, why? So the second part of that, you said, why should we take an interest in improving our ability to move? I think there's really nothing more fulfilling, right? This is we, this body of ours, this is our home. This is what we occupy. This is what we've got to work with. And the more we can understand it, the more we can learn about it, I think the better off we are long term, right? So and then talking specifically to someone with scoliosis, I just don't think it's any different, right? So uh, I've worked with clients that have scoliosis. I've worked with clients with all sorts of different things going on with their body. And each and every one of them is going to see improvements in their health and well-being just by learning about their body, moving their body, exploring with their body, understanding their body on a deeper level, understanding where their bones are in space. This is stuff that just... I find it incredibly fulfilling and rewarding. And I know it's the same for my clientele and really everyone. Yeah, no, and I, I 100% agree. And I really want to get that point across 
that if you do have scoliosis, it doesn't affect your ability to move well and function well. It really doesn't. What you do need to remember is that we are designed for movement. We are human beings that, you know, used to run the plains of Africa and catch, you know, not lions, but we used to catch like meat and like build huts and do all this kind of stuff. And today we're spending a lot of time sitting down and we're very mm -hmm. like sedentary, well, some, some more than others, but this whole functional movement aspect is, is yeah, bas basically taking us back to our primitive time like can we move can we function as humans and primates are supposed to regardless of whether we have scoliosis or not because like adrian said you could have many many different injuries or things that are going on in your body but you just need your body to be able to move and function as well as possible yeah i like that very well said <laughs> okay wonderful so now that we've kind of got down what functional movement is let's let's come on to a little bit of flowability so i absolutely love this system by the way and for my listeners out there adrian is the one that introduced me to this system he is the one that shed this light on my world and made me realize this completely different way of training and actually how useful it is for people with scoliosis so it's really really new and i'm really excited for you guys to actually learn about this as well because he's going to explain it a lot better than what i try to do <laughs> well i don't know about that to be honest like i get asked this question i get asked about flowability on a day-to-day -day basis and it always seems to stump me as to exactly what to say well, uh, yes, it's a, it's a training. I'll do, I'll give it my best shot. I'll give it my best shot. It's a it's a training system. I stumbled upon it maybe two and a half years ago during COVID. Uh, and I was having been in the industry for a decade. I was always searching for really answers, right? Like I had tried a lot of different training systems, but I still had questions regarding you know, why, why I suffered from lower back pain for a really long time, like 15 years managing that as best I could. Um, and not only that, there was all these other questions I had regarding, you know, how do I actually get my T-spine to move? How, like, why am I, why am I still in pain? Uh, I've tried all these different things, but I didn't have the answers to the questions I had now. Yeah. So I had the search and eventually landed on the system flowability and I was just intrigued by uh, what I was seeing online and the results they were getting, they were showcasing just these incredible structural changes. So what I mean by that is changes in posture, changes in how people unconsciously hold themselves in space, the arrangement of the bones. And that took me on this journey that's led up until this point where I'm really enamored and still so stimulated by this training system. Now, what is it specifically? Uh, you could think of it as infant development for adults. So I can expand on that a little bit. It, so when we're born and for our infancy, we essentially learn how to move. And this shapes us for the rest of our life, really. So we're on the ground. We're in these fundamental positions. We're reaching. We're trying to grab things. We learn how to roll over. We're on our bellies. All of this helps develop the musculature and the shape that we have today. We move into these transitional positions up onto our knees, crawling. We eventually work our way to standing. And all of that, as I said before, shapes how we move today, amongst other things. This system is, it's like going through that process again, you know, as an adult. Like, can I change the way my body moves? How, can I change how I interact with my environment so yeah that's one way to to think about it and to give to give the listeners here a little bit of a visual to try and paint a picture I don't know if you think of the most exciting thing you've ever seen in the gym it's like the exact opposite of that it's like <laughs> I, don't you, I don't know if you'd agree with that Claudia but yeah. I just saw something on, I just saw something like a friend just sent me something on Instagram and it's like a guy doing like this Russian twist, but he's holding a sofa, you know, like he's in the gym, <laughs> hanging off a machine, holding a sofa, looking jacked, looking like the man and flowability to paint a picture is like, picture me bending over. 
and that's kind of it right like it's i'm working on these really fundamental movement patterns but within these patterns there's so much to learn right like if we talk about the hip hinge so bending over at the hip what we're working on is arranging our bones in a certain way when we do that and then getting a certain musculature to do their jobs so yeah that's i don't know i don't know if i've kind of <laughs> given you given you or your listeners you you understand the system as well but that gives your listeners a little bit of an idea uh as to what this flowability system is it's i think personally it's incredible uh to speak for myself and my experience thus far i've been able to get myself out of back pain like my lower back legit feels like it's on vacation um the the my hips have changed dramatically from a my glutes have grown uh the, just the sensitivity i can feel things i never felt i can understand where my hips are what they're doing how they're doing it i now have a system that helps me consciously organize myself uh, when i'm outside of the gym so even let's say right now i'm thinking about how i'm positioning myself in the seat in a way that promotes health so it's really cool there's heaps of layers to it there's a lot that we can really dig into here today and we can certainly look at it for people with scoliosis as well but yeah that, that's an overarching idea um i think another overarching idea is like i'm a bit of an idiot so you've got to like take everything i say with a grain of salt um so but i'm just going to try and share my experience and share everything that i've learned and i i know that some of this is going to help you and your listeners oh for sure and i'll just i'll just add like the one one of the things that i love personally about flowability and from someone who has scoliosis is that i find this system really focuses on the spine and the proper mm -hmm. alignment of the spine whereas when when you're in the gym just doing a random workout it's it's you're not focusing on your spine maybe you're thinking about your bicep or you're thinking about your glute or any of that but flowability it's it really does focus on proper alignment of your spine and your whole body. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different way to think about things. And like Adrian was saying, like it will be in your head all day. Like, how am I sitting? How am I moving? How am I bending down to pick something up? So do, getting this, this system into your life is just going to make you start to move and function better. So oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one that's one of the reasons I really, really love it. And um, so coming on to my next question. So one of the things that some of my listeners might see if they see myself or if they look you up doing flowability, they're going to see us doing this weird, forceful exhalation where it sounds like you're trying to blow out a fire or something, you know, cool down some French onion soup or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, So yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So I wanted to ask you, like, why are the forceful exhalations so important? How, how is this affecting our rib cage and our core? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. Um, and certainly a lot of people, a lot of my peers, people that see me training on a day-to-day -day basis, it's like, oh yeah, Adrian's doing the breathing stuff. It's the breathing stuff. <laughs> now, yeah, it is, there's breathing involved in the system. It is still a small part of the system as a whole, but initially it plays a big role and the reason that is is we're trying to create you you touch you alluded to this this being conscious of our spine right and flowability is really spine conscious training would be another way to capture what flowability is now with that in mind we want to create stability which allows for mobility so i'll get into that and i'll um, expand on that in a in a moment but really with the exhalation, so let's say I'm laying down and I'm forcefully exhaling, which you might see me doing in my practice. What I'm working on doing is activating my deep core musculature. So the muscles around my midsection in between my ribs and my pelvis, we use a very specific breathing technique in order to activate these muscles. Like if you, even if you were to just cough, like your listeners right now can try this you'll feel if you have your hands on your lower abdomen and you cough you'll feel a contraction 
And that's our transverse abdominus. So that's the deepest muscle of our core. And so we're going to use forceful exhalations in order to activate our deep core musculature in order to stabilize our lower back, in order to stabilize the area in between our ribs and our pelvis with the goal of aligning our ribs and pelvis and with the goal of creating this stability in our middle so we can ultimately mobilize our ribs, mobilize our T-spine or our thoracic spine and also mobilize our hips. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. Well, so that's, well that's, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm a weirdo on the mat <laughs> yeah. blowing up a storm. That explains why the force relaxations are really important. So even like if you're not practicing flowability, any kind of core movement that you're doing, like you're going to engage so much more of your core just doing those forceful exhalations. So I just love bringing that into to practice and letting people realize that, you know, there's other ways to engage your core, which kind of, which brings me on to my next question, actually. So you mentioned about bringing the rib cage and the pelvis into alignment why why is it important to bring the rib cage and pelvis into alignment and like why is that especially important with someone with scoliosis yeah that's um again another great question this like this is really the system itself is based on a series of principles and there's a there's an order of operations right like we work on one thing in order to install that and then we work on the next thing and um, always thinking about the whole, the entire body. And the first port of call is getting our rib cage and our pelvis aligned. Now, we know our ribs are this, this bony structure, our ribs, and then our pelvis directly below it. Now, what that alignment looks like, I think if you've seen any anatomy book or a picture of a skeleton, you'll see that the ribs and pelvis are aligned. The ribs are stacked directly above the pelvis. And I find it interesting that the anatomy textbooks get this get this right but what we tend to see on a day-to-day -day basis i'm in a gym 10 hours a day so i get to observe a lot of human beings and a lot of bodies and for most of us and this included me my ribs and pelvis were, were not on the same team they were moving in every which direction and what that means is it, it all compounds in our lower back or our lumbar spine so let's say my ribs lift the reciprocal is going to happen with my pelvis so my pelvis is going to tip forward kind of scissoring me open and pushing my belly out now that movement hyperextends my lower back right and then the same thing if i if i flex forward if i flex forward and the front of my ribs collapse towards my pelvis that's flexing my lower back now for the majority of us we are using our lower back just far too much right like every, almost everyone i come in contact with has had some experience with back pain specifically lower back pain and i i was someone like that 16 years i dealt with it and and for me it's as simple it's not simple it's not simple when we talk about pain pain is very complex the human nervous system is very complex but if we we are just moving our lower back far too much we if we reach for something it's our lower back if we rotate if it's our lower back if we bend over it's our lower back and we see this all day every day just watch somebody tie their shoelace <laughs> now it yeah so it's become unconsciously this primary form of movement it's like the first thing to move when we go to do anything and if we just think of the anatomy it's not the you know, it's not the best idea. Like we've got like our, we've got these vertebrae, which are part of our spine. And we're choosing to use that as a primary form of movement instead of our hips. Now, if you think of our hips, our hips is this big bone that's a few bones that make up our pelvis. And then you've got this huge femur that sits into a ball and socket joint. Like this is an amazing joint with huge musculature around it. It's an amazing joint that we should really be utilizing. But because we're using our lower back it's like we're just we're kind of outsourcing what the hips should be doing to the lower back we're outsourcing what the upper back and the ribs should be doing to the lower back and for our overall health i 
as I've come to understand, it's just not the best idea. So this is a really long-winded answer, but I'm getting I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's some good stuff in there. And that little I'm definitely gonna go on some rants, Claudia. You know that. Like I if know. I get re- if I get really tangential, you've just gotta just like pull me back in and we'll uh <laughs> Well, a lot, but I'm going to, I'm going to land the plane. I'll guarantee it. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, what we're looking to do, what we're looking to do is align the ribs and pelvis in order to stop using our lower back as this kind of primary form of movement or primary or like focal point of movement. We want to, I'm not saying we cannot move our lower back. We certainly can, but just not the way we are. So getting the rib cage and pelvis aligned is so that we can stabilize the lower back. I talked about stability a little bit earlier. So we can stabilize our lumbar spine, so we can stabilize our core and aligning our ribs and pelvis is then going to allow us to access our hips a lot better. It's going to allow us to access our upper back and our ribs a lot better. So the first port of call, like we want to create mobile and strong hips. We want to create mobility in our ribs and in our spine right especially when it comes to scoliosis but in order to do that we have to create stability first for something to move we have to keep something stable still so let's try and build stability into our midsection by aligning our ribs and pelvis by using that forceful exhalation in in order to engage our deep core musculature so that we can then start to mobilize the things below and above it our hips and then our ribs and our t-spine so speaking specifically to scoliosis let's build in stability in the middle so that we can then work on opening the ribs and doing our best to rearrange things so that's just going to help our overall well-being yeah yes plane has landed (laughs) it kind of landed the plane i don't know there was a bit of a rant but i think (laughs) no you did yeah you did good you did good and just to use myself as an example so i have right thoracic left lumbar scoliosis and my rib cage is definitely out of alignment with my pelvis i mean it's better than it was but like basically my my ribs hover way in front of um, my pelvis and i'm sure this is probably similar for some of you guys as well it's really common with scoliosis especially with um thoracic curves because it can create a little bit of lordosis in the upper back which is the opposite of what we're supposed to have so it's going to push your rib cage forward and obviously we have rotation through the rib cage as well so like adrian was saying if we can focus on bringing our ribs and bringing our pelvis into that better alignment and stabilizing them there then we can actually focus on starting to get some length through the spine and starting to open up the ribs especially in those concave areas and I really I see this in myself a lot when I practice flowability and when I combine it with some um, scoliosis correctives like schroth getting that pelvis and rib cage in that really nice alignment is just the the start of being able to move and adjust the rest of my spine so yeah it sets a foundation right yeah foundation like and if I I'll just but in here again, I've just, just thought of something that I think is relevant. It's it Gray Cook. Gray Cook is a I don't know, movement maestro. He's a he's heavily influenced the the entire fitness industry. He's the creator of the functional movement system. But he would preach uh, what is tight is going to stay tight, and what is loose will just get looser. So with that in mind, if we are like so with that in mind it's it's our lower back that's very loose very mobile hypermobile right but if we go and try and lengthen or open up our rib cage if we go try and <laughs> disappear there but if we go and try and lengthen and open up our rib cage but we're also lengthening our lower back then all that's going to lengthen is our lower back does that makes does that make sense it's like if you've got tight hamstrings and you try and stretch your hamstrings but you're also stretching your lower back. It's your lower back that'll actually, you, you might feel a stretch, but it's your lower back that'll continue to lengthen. You won't actually get the length from where you're actually trying to get it from. And that it goes, it's the same with the ribs. It's like, if I'm trying to open or manipulate my rib cage, if I'm just moving, if my lower back's just flopping everywhere, the movement's just, or the length is just going to come from where the length already was. 
And I think that just brings us back around to why we want to create that stability through our middle in order to break open what we want to break open. 100%. Yes, I love it. Okay. Love it. Love it. <laughs> so kind of con- connecting on with that, um, one, of, one of the things I do love with flowability as well that, again, other systems don't really focus on is is lateral hip work and opening the hips. So I just kind of want to ask you, what what are the benefits of doing this kind of work with our hips? Yeah, the hips, um, within the system, it's like the hips of the garden. Like we've just got to, we've got to nurture the garden. We've got to constantly make sure we're improving the health and well-being of our hips. And this is really, this is like, let's say ribs and pelvis is the first priority. Let's, and this is, this is within the system. And this is, and understand like, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just practicing the system. I'm just a student of the system. Right. Um, and I'm just learning from my mentors. This isn't, this isn't my system. I'm not, a, I'm not a coach of the system, but though I try to introduce it to as many people as possible, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that, um, so yeah, let's say first we, we prioritize within the system, ribs and pelvis, getting our deep core on. From there, that allows, because we've created that stability, that allows us to access our hips. Now, as I mentioned before, the hip is a, it's a ball and socket joint. So it has this crazy, you know, all sorts of degrees of freedom or range of motion that we should be able to access, but generally we see a lot of tight hips. We see small butts, we see tight hips and it's, it's not ideal. So once we stabilize the middle, we work on developing the hips and that starts with, starts with sensation. So what I mean by that is getting certain areas specifically of the hip starting to connect these areas to our brain or vice versa, right? There's certain, you mentioned the lateral hip. So if we think of the outside of our hip or even the top, the top of our butt, we've got this muscle called the glute medius. Now, for most of us, this included me, like my glute medius was just non-existent. It didn't, it didn't exist. It was just, there's nothing. There was no meat. There was nothing really there. Um, but now with this practice, there's this huge emphasis on it because it does do so much. It's if we just look at, if you just, you know, go into any anatomy book and look at what the glute medius does, it, it flexes our hips. So it brings our leg towards us. It extends our hips. So our leg goes behind us. It abducts our hip, So it brings our leg out to the side. It turns our leg in, it turns our leg out. So, and then it also has a role in stabilizing the pelvis so this this muscle is like it's incredibly important for how we move specifically how we walk how we stabilize ourselves so with with the system or with training in general with my training with your training the emphasis is on keeping the middle together but then once i keep the middle together can i now can i now move my hips in a way that loads this tissue of my glute medius that loads the tissue of my glute max that loads the tissue of my groin so that I can start to feel these areas of my body which is just potentially connecting to things that haven't been working for our entire life or have been working in a way that serves us you know it serves us but it's not really ideal right? Like our body's ultimately this incredible thing that can just adapt to anything and it will adapt no matter what you do to it, it will figure it out. But sometimes that's not optimal. What we're looking to do with this system is kind of rearrange, change things around a little bit, install some things that are going to help us move in an optimal way. It's going to make us feel good, pain-free, move efficiently. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So that's kind of, we're talking about the lateral hip and the hips in general. Yeah, this, my hips feel crazy. Like I came into this system, like thinking all my issues were up here. Like I was like, oh man, I got this ugly ass neck. I feel like I'm too kyphotic. And this was the only system that I saw that could really help with these structural problems I thought I had in my upper body. I actually thought my hips were pretty good. 
but then coming into this i'm now learning the capacity is crazy like the, the range of motion that's increased in my hip how my hips just feel it feels like i don't know it's hard i can't think necessarily think of a metaphor or analogy but they just feel great they just feel like there's so much space they feel hydrated would be one way to think about it they feel strong i feel as strong as i've ever felt um and then back to the scoliosis piece we need to if we're looking to influence our ribs and our upper back we need to be conscious of what's happening with our hips regardless just because of the point i brought up earlier um what's tight will remain tight and what's loose will get looser if we don't have if we haven't created stability in our hip as well as our middle then we're not necessarily going to be able to access what we want up top so this is part of this order of operations that i'm still really just learning about like i feel like i'm only scratching the surface of the system but yeah it's start with the middle ribs and pelvis then let's get to um let's get to cranking into these hips so that we can really express some great movement and feel really good yeah and i 100 percent agree and just um throwing in some scoliosis um it is it is common and i noticed this in myself and with some of my clients that our hips tend to be really really unstable and we we struggle with balance and proprioception a lot more than than the the normal person the normal spine so having this focus on lateral movement is obviously going to help build that strength in your glute medius which like adrian said can be neglected a lot of the time with people and can be very like non-existent so it is this is the, the first muscle we really want to come to to help us with our balance and to help us with our uh, movement in general but just getting that stability in our pelvis so then we can start to actually create some changes up in the spine and the ribs which oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. but yeah it's a, like we need to be on one leg a lot right we need yeah. to be on one leg and the the best way for us to be on one leg is to move kind of our foot towards the midline which moves our hip outside of our foot and that's how we that's how we balance on one foot and in order to do that we need space in the outside of our hip we need strength and stability in the outside of our hip or else we're just going to again start compensating with our floppy midsection yeah so and then yeah speaking to scoliosis like the, the with the mass of the rib cage being different that is going to impact our center of gravity right that's going to impact your center of gravity and how you position yourself and how you balance and it will be harder but nevertheless like with this practice you're spending time practicing what look like very basic positions but as you full well know it's incredibly hard work to try and get everything exactly where you want it to get the right muscles to turn on to create equilibrium which is balance right that's our center of gravity over our base of support so we are balanced but it's a fun journey it's a fun journey where you learn a lot about yourself yeah. and it's uh, i've got lost in the process and it's it's rewarded me like uh, yeah the reward has been incredible yeah and i i agree 100 percent. and this kind of leads me on to my next burning question which i'm sure a lot of my listeners would be very curious about as well is it really possible to change the shape of your rib cage and maybe even the shape of your spine talking about like making it more kyphotic for example or finding some more lordosis in your lower back like is it really possible to change the shape and especially just using the breath yeah yeah this is a this is a great question this is like something i ponder all the time and i can give you a few few things to think about it's i remember a, a coach of mine once said to me like if you're in a car crash you know, your body might change instantly <laughs> and it might change permanently, you know, in an instant. So it's amazing what force can do. Ooh. With that said, you know, we're not like, we're not trying to get into a car crash and we're not trying to put our body under that kind of stress and in one go. So it's, you've got to think about it almost like, like how water shapes rock, you know, if a river's running over a rock, eventually that rock will erode and but it just takes time it takes reps it takes energy it takes effort it takes paying attention it takes rest 
but but it's doable it, it is it is certainly doable and I've, I've seen it i've seen it happen i can feel it starting to happen within within my own body now yeah just being being conscious of it is is one thing but yeah the short answer is is yes like that that is that is the short answer but it, it just takes all of those things it takes a, a dedicated practice it takes a lot of time like time's the asset in this in this system where just the time and the reps over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until you start to feel these new sensations that you can then work on and you can start to explore these new areas that you can then open um but yeah some of my mentors i'm seeing the way their bodies are moving the cool thing about the system is it's it's almost like exponential the the gains the improvements there's no almost like a martial art it's like you can't just walk in and be a black belt you know you can't just walk into a jiu-jitsu class and you become black belt. you have to put in the work over time to get there there's no faking it you can't just pick up pick up a guitar if you've never played and you know play it well so in that sense it's it's pretty cool that you know someone that's been practicing this for five years you know someone that's only been practicing it for a year they're not going to be able to express what the other people can and that's one of the coolest things like the the whole system is based on like show me you know and show me how stable your spine is show me how much you can move your rib cage show me how you know all of these things show me how you can extend your t-spine without flaring your ribs and that's the coolest part but yeah long story short is i've seen some yeah like i've seen some crazy i can feel some crazy stuff within myself like areas of rigidity in my rib cage that are now starting to get gooey and starting to feel more like mobile and you know allowing me more and that's that's really cool and then to see the people that mentor me and to see what they're able to access from a movement standpoint it's just like it blows my mind like it blows my mind it's subtle and not necessarily subtle it's just i guess you need a trained eye to see this stuff and to understand these changes and why these changes are important but long story short yes you can influence the rib cage certainly and the spine the spine as well like i've i've seen i saw um even something online recently about just bulging discs healing through physiotherapy and whatnot so uh these things can certainly change but you know it's it takes a dedicated practice it takes a lot of work it takes paying attention we're trying to influence our nervous system right and so that's our brain that's our spinal cord that's all the nerves that innovate our entire body and the older we get the harder that is but we can still influence the nervous system we can still create neuroplasticity which is the changing of these neural connections even as an adult and that takes takes hard work it takes stress it takes paying attention and it takes rest but if we can get those things done then yeah we can make some really positive and really incredible changes yeah yeah and i I just want to add as well that I also felt it like with this, with this movement, with this practice, and especially when you, when you're doing flowability, but you're, you're really conscious of your scoliosis and your breathing and trying to open up that concave area, the, the concave areas where your ribs are compressed. So I felt it myself, like actually starting to open up this concave area and get those ribs to have a little bit of mobility because once those ribs start to open up a little bit that is where you can actually start to get some derotation through your thoracic spine where you can actually start to make some really like awesome changes with your scoliosis and if you stay consistent enough maybe even start to reverse your curvature and like adrian said it does not happen overnight it takes a long time and a lot of consistency but it is really really possible so i just don't want you guys to lose hope out there just get some motivation and listen listen to what i'm saying you can make some change for your spine so get working on it today yeah and even to speak to that claudia like working with you specifically like this this practice is so specific right we really got to think about where you are in space and how we're positioning our body whether that's on all fours whether that's seated whether that's standing whether that's bending over but it's cool to just see like able to see those that concave area of your rib cage that you speak about and how we can actually manipulate position and use 
breath to change the shape like in the moment right like yeah. and that's that's really cool you know if we can change the shape in the moment and it's just it's just on you to try and maintain that over a long period of time and that's therein lies the challenge but it's it's a challenge that's I think worth undertaking yeah and, and I I've, yeah I've yeah I was gonna say I've seen my rib cage basically because I have quite quite a lot of rotation but I can actually de-rotate it pretty well so it's just like getting my body to to be able to hold that position which I am positive that one day it will just go yeah. back to safety. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and all and yeah like you said like all with the you mentioned all with the breath like can we change the shape of our ribs or the shape of our spine all with the breath like it's not just the breath but the breath is a big part of it right like the yeah. the other part of the system is we're trying to trying to really pull on everything it's like almost like pulling drawstrings we're using our tissue let's say if i reach my arms out my hand the tissue of my hand is pulling on my forearm which is pulling on my bicep, which is pulling on my shoulder, which is pulling on my shoulder girdle, which is then pulling on my ribs. So a lot of the practice is trying to get things away from one another so we can lengthen the middle. So if I, even if I just try and reach the crown, like if just the idea of like standing up tall or getting the crown of your head up towards the ceiling, the crown of my head is then going to pull on the tissue of my neck, which is then going to pull on the tissue that connects to my spine. So a lot of the practice is this idea of creating this tension, this tensile strength, which is when we're strong, when we're being lengthened, but all this pulling is ultimately pulling on our middle. And then we use the breath to create the space, mm -hmm. which is pretty, it's pretty cool. Like these are really, I don't know, these are concepts that just kind of blow my mind. I'm still, I still have a rudimentary understanding of all of it, but it's stuff that I think about a lot and it, it gets me <laughs> jazzed. So anyway, just, yeah, that's a, so, yeah. so let's say that we've like really hyped someone up here to try some flowability. What would your tips for a beginner wanting to try out this system be? Um, it's, I guess, patience, like curiosity is key uh, with, with this stuff. Like uh, there's obviously a website we can leave in the show notes and whatnot, okay. flowability.com. You can look at it again. It's not my work. This is, uh, Jordan's work and, but go have a look like that'd be a place to start. You can read up about this stuff. Um, but yeah, curiosity is, it's going to be hugely important. Got, there has to be a level of want, you know, the, the, you have to want to understand your body at a deeper level and, then it's just the consistency. So the, it all starts with just like laying on your back, doing some basic breath work in order to align our ribs and pelvis. But even within that, there's it's such high value, like a, creating more capacity for your lungs is going to help with your overall health. Uh, learning about these bony structures, like where are my ribs? Where are my pelvis? What does it feel like to activate my deep core? Just, just that holds incredible value. Some of the soft tissue work, where you're just you're using maybe a lacrosse ball or a foam roller to hydrate tissue and also connect uh, your brain to certain areas of your body that might be dormant. Like these things that you can do as a beginner, they're all such high value things that I still do really every day. So as a beginner, it's just the it's ultimately the doing, right? You've got to do the work, but there's so much joy to be found in that and it's it's so stimulating and this stuff like we've said it takes a long time but with that it's like you're gonna have these small wins constantly you're just gonna start to feel better you're gonna start to understand your body a little bit more you might feel something you've never felt you might be able to do something you've never done before like these are all you know you might go and do something that usually causes pain and it doesn't you know these are all these small wins you can just latch on to and get lost in the process because mm. that yeah that's ultimately it but consistency and curiosity like yeah i find the people that have the most success are curious about the stuff they want to learn they want to understand their body they want to they want to improve so yeah, yeah. that would be my tips for beginners there yeah 100 percent. and it's um especially if you have scoliosis you you have to take ownership of your body you have to want to be able to change it because honestly no one is going to do it for you you have to be the one to be, you know, know everything about your curvature, know everything about your spine. You've got to be an expert of your own body. And then once you start doing 
this kind of system or, or anything to really help your scoliosis, you'll get that curiosity and be like, oh, like I feel my spine like lengthening or I feel my concave area opening and all these kind of little things that you start to realize and just staying consistent. And then you'll, you'll notice that they, they really start to show and it, it becomes really interesting. So yeah, just take ownership of your body, respect your body, love yourself and do something good for your scoliosis. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which brings me on to my next question. How might someone with scoliosis practice flowability and maybe adjust a couple of the things for their curvature? Yeah, that's, um, we've, we've talked about that, right? And yeah, we've played around with certain things. I ultimately think initially it's like, I think like even just not even thinking about it is a good idea with some of the initial work. Like when you're just thinking ribs and pelvis alignment, just like, I don't think you need to take it into account just at the basic, basic stuff, the breath work. But then like, I think like some of the stuff you can probably speak to it a little bit better of some of the stuff yeah. we've played around with, right? Like we've um, focused on breathing into certain areas. So like say the concave area, the, the area that's more compressed, thinking of breathing into that area, even setting up, I don't know, we've used cushions, right? Little bean bags in order to set up like in a sideline position in order to just adjust and line things up a little better. These are like very specific things you can yeah. do if you have scoliosis but I think initially like just the basic core work like just just go for it and then that's actually going to flush things out in a way like once we align the ribs and pelvis we can start to see okay yeah this is really how things are positioned and then we can start to look at influencing things from there yeah yeah and I think that's that's a great place to start definitely and for myself when I practice um most of the time like Adrian said I'm just focusing on getting my rib cage and pelvis aligned and I'm not really thinking about my scoliosis because the whole thing of flowability is lengthening through your spine and breathing. I would just recommend knowing your concave and convex areas because you want to be able to focus your breath more into the concave side. And there is some sideline work. So if you're working on your side, again, like Adrian said, maybe using bean bags or props just underneath the areas of your curve that collapse into the ground just because you don't want to collapse more into your curvature and you don't, especially don't want to strengthen your curvature in that position so using these little props helps but again it really just if you don't have much of a curve it might be better to just focus on on lengthening but obviously it depends on the severity of your scoliosis but just basically work on trying to get your spine as aligned as possible before you start to strengthen those muscles Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So kind of coming coming towards the end, I'm going to ask you one more question. And then I got a couple of questions from my listeners. So we'll we'll dig into that into a moment. But just coming on to my final question for you. How could you summarize the benefits of practicing flowability, especially compared to with like your average gym workout or like yoga, for example, obviously, I'm a yoga teacher, like, why what are the benefits why might someone wake up tomorrow and be like hmm i'll try flowability yeah good question that's um for me for, for i can just speak from my, my own experience i I'd tried so many things like i tried so many different uh movement practices systems and like i landed on this just it just made the most logical sense for me just something as simple as like you adrian you're using your lower back far too much look and i'm able to see it i'm able to feel it like how about we get you using your hips a lot more and that just makes so much logical sense to me and then it's just so well executed like um i've there's so much different core work out there and understanding of core but this the execution of the system the core work just make, it just makes the most sense to me like how this 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 seems like the most logical way to strengthen our core and then integrate it with our hips um it's the benefits in my mind it's like i'm looking to i want my body to operate at a high level for as long as possible so i want to be able to snowboard i want to be able to hit a golf ball i want to be able to play basketball and i want to be pain-free 
I want to look a certain way, you know? So there's still an aesthetic that I'm after. I, I kind of want all of it. And this to me is the, it's, it's helped me the most and it's, it makes the most sense to steer me in that direction for what I am after. Um, and compared to the, like the classic or an average gym workout, like it is different, right? I have, I haven't lifted weights in two years, which is crazy, you know, and I've, but like I've spent over a decade lifting weights prior to that. And then this system turned up and you know that's and but again like i'm kind of doing the deep dive i'm going all in with this stuff just to see how i can change my body this could be something that you might just plug in with everything else that you do right um and it for me it's not convincing anyone i'm not like i don't want to sell this to anyone it's more just hey here's how it's helped me here's how i make sense of it and you know hey give it a try it might make sense to you and it might you know it might help you so that's you know that's where i'd leave but yeah something 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and um i'll just add in that like the the benefits that i find for it especially with scoliosis on on the I guess on the superficial level is that it's really going to help strengthen your core and your glutes and everything yeah. in in a safe way whereas i find in gyms and yoga there are there are things that we can do that maybe aren't the safest or the best for scoliosis whereas the system because it is focusing on getting proper alignment with your spine and building your core and your glutes and and everything whilst holding this alignment i just find it really really safe and and really like just useful for for people especially with scoliosis but just people in the world everyone i, I think everyone should incorporate this into their day just a little bit even if it's like two minutes totally yeah totally yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean I'll, i'm ultimately here to help people like that's one of my overarching goals and yeah, this has helped me tremendously and it's helped my clients as well so i'm just yeah trying to help introduce it to people and help make it a little bit more accessible as well like some of it is confusing convoluted weird different mm. against status quo but with all of that you know it's hard but with all of that like the results can be you know life-changing yeah yes love it okay let's just move on i got two questions from my listeners and then we will wrap it up so jenny Wu has asked i get a lot of pain in my lower back it hurts when i do glute bridges what do you suggest okay awesome um a lot of back pain yeah this is this is classic this is the same for me um with when my lower back was really bothering me like it would be positions of extension um so say like a glute bridge your feet are flat on the ground you're lying on your back you lift your butt up off the ground for most people when they initially do this their butt will only lift so high before their rib cage starts to flare and so that only so much of that movement has been expressed with their hip and then their lower back takes over. So their lower back starts to hyperextend, rib cage starts to lift. And then it's like, oh yeah, I feel, ugh, I feel my lower back. That doesn't feel great. So yeah, certainly positions of extension bothered me when I was hyperextending my lower back, it would cause a lot of pain for me. Um, so with what you want to work on is just not letting your rib cage flare like if we, if we can start to associate because for most of us our ribs are just acting as one unit right we should have mobility within the rib but the ribs just acting as one unit and we can start if we can start to associate okay if my rib cage is lifting or flaring that's compounding in my lower back or that's hyper extending my lower back so if we can start to create that connection or that idea that's going to change how we move. So specifically for a bridge, I'm lifting my hips up off the ground. I'm squeezing my butt. Just see how high you can get without your rib cage flaring, you know, so your chest coming up. It, just see how that goes. So you can also play around with using a forceful exhalation, which helps to keep the core on and keep mm. the ribs from flaring. But yeah, very simply, just try and do the same exercise without your rib cage flaring. Yeah. Your back will not hyperextend and you'll be able to, utilize your hips a little bit more but yeah, yeah exactly. it's, it's a class that's a classic it's just kind of basic 
it's, it is. it's basic but it's not basic right it's like we see the stuff all day every day and we're just not yeah. thinking about it so yeah. cool yeah no that, that that's yeah that's really good and um yeah jenny i would just yeah again suggest like, trying to keep that rib cage down trying not to flare through the ribs and really bringing your energy and your focus to your glutes because it glutes are tired they're, they're especially with the human body these days they can be very um not awake so sometimes i feel like we just need to bring a bit of extra focus to our glutes when we're trying to use them to actually get them to do the work instead of getting our lower backs to do the work so send oh, your yeah. energy yeah yeah send your energy oh, yeah. and your focus to your glutes try and keep your lower back out of it it's it's a hip dominant movement all the movement is coming from your hip joint not from your lower back which oh yeah easiest explained than done in real life <laughs> yeah yeah just use your hips instead of your lower back is very easy to say in <laughs> practice it's incredibly difficult yes exactly um, okay wonderful and then one more question nikki j90 my instructor tells me to flatten my back on the ground during core exercises but flowability does not i am unsure of which i should be doing please can you explain yeah this is um yeah this is a classic point this is something i speak to a lot um one like i never want to deter people from doing anything uh, that's first and foremost like you can flatten your lower back and you can you know you can do that um there's psychological elements to telling people like you can or cannot do certain things but i think once you uh, i always explain this to my clients we can we can overcome these psychological elements of being afraid to do movements or should i do this or shouldn't i do this but very simply uh, within flowability we want to and just really, it, it just makes more sense to keep the lordotic curve of our lower back, right? Our lower back has a curve. There's a lordotic curve in our lower back, just as there's a kyphotic curve in our upper back. Now, if we're flattening our lower back into the ground, that means we're flexing our lower back. And it just, again, I spoke to this earlier, it just feeds this, like we're just, hyper reliant on our lower back as it is and it just continues to feed that reliance on our lower back it continues to grow the musculature of our lower back uh, it'll continue to feed the fact that we sit in our lower back whenever we sit down right it'll continue to feed the issue that we extend our lower back when we stand up and very simply like if you're doing anything athletically running jumping even squatting right? We want that walking. We want and we need that lordotic curve in our spine for all of these things. So to think that core training is best done with a flat lower back and a flexed lumbar spine, I think it's kind of crazy. But <laughs> again, again, it's like, you know, that's for, you know, that's for, that's for you to decide as well, right? I'm, I'm never going to deter anyone from doing and trying, but as a professional and with my clientele it's yeah like i want people to maintain that natural lordotic curve of the lower back when they're doing core work on the ground and really when they're doing really everything so yeah. it's it's a it's a challenge um and it might be different from you know what one coach is saying but uh yeah again that's it just it just makes the most sense to me and i've seen the best results um working on that as well yeah. And just as if you're practicing just a, a basic, even like dead bug, like you're lying on your back, you're extending one leg and you don't want your lower back on the ground. I wouldn't, um, I, I wouldn't think about trying to lift your lower back off the ground. I just would think about not pressing it down. Mm. That's uh, just a little coaching cue that I've found has been successful. Some people try to lift their lower back and that again, just, and now we're hyper extending the lower back. So yeah, exactly. The stuff is very specific. Um, but again, lots of learning to do. And that was yeah, that was a great question. But yeah, short answer is yeah, functionally it just serves us a lot better to maintain that neutral curve in our lower back. Yeah, and I I hundred percent agree. I'm thinking when we're when we're training and when we're trying to strengthen our core and our body in general, we, we want to try and maintain the natural curvatures of our spine. We don't want to strengthen our spine in any kind of weird positions because we want it to be 
trying, especially with scoliosis, to try and have it as natural as possible. And when, when you're pushing your lower back down into the curve, especially if you have quite a big um, lordotic curvature in your lower back, you could actually be compressing the discs and compressing into your curve a little bit more. So it just, yeah, it wouldn't be my my first suggestion to, to flatten the back, but, it, you know, everyone um, trains a little bit differently. So, yeah, that was, that was awesome. Um, we will wrap some things up. Is there anything else you would like to say, Adrian? A little goodbye for my listeners? Any any wisdom to part? Um, yeah, good question. Thank thank you, first and foremost. It's cool. Like I'm just like I'm reflecting on things I said and I'm all, all already like, <laughs> man, I'm an idiot. Like I could have said this, blah, blah, blah. But I think within all my mumbo jumbo, there's some there's some good stuff there for your listeners. And uh, I'm stoked if anyone gets anything from this. Um, yeah that makes me really happy it's always good to hang out with you Claudia you're doing some really cool stuff I love I love this I love to see it Um, I love to see the work you're doing and the way you're supporting and building this community it's just it's it's a beautiful thing Um, parting notes there I think it's like biomechanics matters, I think is the 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 part I want to share like movement matters these um this it it can be really profound our body has this incredible ability to adapt and change based on you know the stress we put our body under so with that if we can really start to install some great habits the way we organize our body on a day-to-day basis like you'll you'll see some incredible changes that the human body is an amazing thing um so yeah like learning to be mindful of your movement and just learning about how your body moves, um, how you can improve your movement. It's like, it's this rabbit hole that is just, just keeps giving. You're going to learn so much about yourself and it's just going to, yeah, it's going to serve you for your entire life for years to come. So yeah, I encourage anyone like, and whether that's, you know, whether that's exploring flowability or whether that's doing really anything with your body, just, you know, adopt the movement practice, start to learn, start to educate yourself, work with professionals reach out to claudia reach out to myself um and just yeah dive into the journey get lost in the process and yeah you'll be thankful for it yeah yeah i love that and um i i say the same thing i just just get some movement in oh, yeah. any yeah right. any kind of movement and i think is going to help and and start to you know strengthen your spine and help your scoliosis in any way so movement is medicine and i'm always going to preach that and this has been amazing again thank you adrian so much for coming on and giving me your time and giving me your wisdom and it was just really fun getting to ask you those questions for myself and for my listeners so yeah this was really really good and i (laughs) (laughs) it has been really good claudia (laughs) i just watched you get lost in your sentence there but it's a beautiful thing it's easy it's easy to get done it's easy okay so thank you again and i will give i'll add your uh, details down below if anyone wants to reach out or ask any questions you shall know where to find him um have a wonderful rest of your day i will speak to you soon goodbye